Shalom, shalom, shalom. Bye for another quick lesson. And first and foremost, as always, before I get started, I'm going to turn to the east and give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. And next, double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of Great Millstone, who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether people hear or forbear. And uh, today I'm just going to be reading a quick exhortation from the book of Philippians, chapter 2. And this is going to be a quick exhortation on humility, all right, uh, keeping ourselves humble and uh, keeping ourselves in good spirits and, and, and thankful for this blessed gift, this blessed ministry, all right, not getting proud, not getting cocky, all right, and it's pretty much continuing uh, to fight that good fight of faith, all right, so Lord, willingness is edifying to the elect, wherever you may be scattered across the four winds of heaven, the four corners of the earth. Uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. This is the book of Philippians, chapter 2, and verse 1. If there, be, if there be therefore any consolation in the anointing, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. All right, so we're all, you know, uh, fighting for the same, the same mission, one hope, as the scriptures say. In fact, let's, let's get that right quick. You know, we all, we're all fighting for the same thing, all right? Lord willing to make it into a chariot, all right? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4, there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, all right? And that, that one body is the body of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. We are the bride, all right, and he is the head, all right? We are the body, he is the head. So, <clears throat> okay, so, and we all have one hope. All right, we're all called for this great mission that the Lord has put us on, all right, to fulfill the will of the Heavenly Father, all right, to prophesy unto our people and gather the elect who are scattered, all right, gather the elect by way of the word, okay, by way of the Holy Spirit going out when we preach this word, all right, and gather them to be delivered, okay, Prepare them for the day of deliverance. All right. Feed them with the knowledge, wisdom, understanding that the Heavenly Father wants them to have according to his mind, his heart, that he set us up to do. That's our calling in the hope that we make it into a cherry and delivered from the place of our captivity. So going back, it says, verse three, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. All right, so that's how we, you know, that's how we got to see. Actually, matter of fact, it makes me think of um, Matthew chapter 23, I believe it is. All right, Matthew chapter 23, where the Lord said, The servant shall be the greatest in the kingdom. Yep, here it is. All right, so um, let's see. Matthew chapter 23 and verse, <clears throat> verse 9. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Hamashiach, even the anointed. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. All right, it's a beautiful scripture. All right, so, you know, keep yourself humble. All right, that's really, like I said, the main, the main message of this, uh, this video today. All right, can't get arrogant, cannot get puffed up with pride, all right? Because uh, the Lord, he's the one that put the spirit on us. So, so, you know, how can we boast? Matter of fact, let's, let's get that, all right? The, the, the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai is the one who put the spirit on us that makes us different, all right? Different from the people of the rest of the world. Otherwise, you know, otherwise we would be just like uh, anybody else, all right? So we, we can't get proud. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. For who maketh thee to differ from one another? From another, Salakia. And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as thou, as if thou hadst not received it? All right, so don't get arrogant as if it's something that you did. Okay, if, 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 the, if the spirit is on you to be righteous, all right, to do the work of the Lord and obey the law, his commandments to the best of your ability, 
It's because the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, is the one that put that spirit on you to do it. It's not of your own works. All right. Let's see. Let's go back. Philippians chapter 2. And verse uh, <clears throat> verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, who being in the form of Yahweh, thought it not robbery to be equal with Yahweh, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. All right. So, he, you know, he, he he's the only begotten son of the, of the heavenly father. He could have easily came down with great power and glory and took everything over and snatched the kingdom from the from the um, from the Edomites, the Edomite Romans when he came. But he came uh, humbly. OK. And made himself of no reputation in order to fulfill the will of of the heavenly father to fulfill the prophecies all right it says um and being found in a fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore yahweh also hath highly exalted him meaning it's saying so this is the reason why yahweh highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name and that lines up perfectly with that matthew 23 where it says verse 12 and whosoever shall exalt himself should be abased and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. All right. Because as you see, um, <clears throat> as you see, uh, you know, Yahweh Shai is a living example. He was a, an example of that. All right? He humbled himself. And then after that, that humbling came great glory. OK. And the same it's going to be the same for for the uh, hopeful elect. All right. We're looked at as the scum of the earth. Let's get that. First Corinthians. We looked at, we looked at as the scum of the earth right now, but great glory is coming. We're you know we're taking the uh, taking the ostracism, right? Taking the condemnation, taking the you know people hating us and all these things, the revilings, all right? In order and hope to achieve eternal life, which is the the greatest honor, the greatest glory. Let's see. It says um, First Corinthians chapter four. I'll find it. Here it is, verse nine. For I think that Yahweh has set us forth as the apostles last as it were appointed to death for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men we are fools for your hamashiach's sake but you are wise in hamashiach we are weak but you are strong you are honorable but we are despised even unto this present day even to this present hour we both hunger and thirst and are naked and buffeted and have no certain dwelling place and labor working with our own hands being reviled we bless being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of this world and the filth of the world and the offscoring of all things unto this day. All right. So you see, this is a perfect example of that, man. The same way that he suffered. All right. And went through hell. OK. And was and was uh, humbled himself down and, and took on the world. All right. And now he, he received great glory. All right. And it was going to be the same for the for the elect. All right. I'm just going to read that in the NLT. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, let's see. Yeah. NLT, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 11. Even now we go hungry and thirsty and we don't have enough clothes to keep warm. We are often beaten and have no home. We work worldly with our own hands to earn our living. We bless those who curse us. We are patient with those who abuse us. We appeal gently when evil things are said about us. Yet we are treated like the world's garbage, like everybody's trash, right up to this present moment. All right. So that once again, man, that's how I went through the same thing, man. How I went through the same thing. All right. And a servant is no greater than his master. Let's, let's get Isaiah 53. All right. Kind of goes into this. Isaiah 53. It says, um. Verse three, it says, <clears throat> actually, verse two, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, speaking of Yahweh, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. 
We despised, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, verse 7, Salaki, Isaiah 53 and 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. All right. So, let's keep, let's keep reading. There's a lot of meat in this. Verse, verse 9, And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. All right. It says, um, <clears throat> let's see. Verse 10, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put to grief. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. All right. So it's saying that we're, we're, we're offering spiritual sacrifices to the Lord when we're out there on the highways and byways. All right. Being reviled. Look at it as the trash of the earth. Okay. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall beat their bear their iniquity. So like you. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. All right, so he went through. He 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 uh, humbled himself, went through great suffering, and now he's greatly exalted. All right, and it's the same way. It's the same way for us. You know, um, we're not going to go through everything that he went through, obviously, to the same extent, but we humble ourselves and, and willingly suffer okay so that we can receive glory on the other side all right and it's, and it's the opposite for people who, who um who exalt themselves all right let's go back to uh, matthew 23 and verse 12 and whoso shall exalt himself shall be abased and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted it makes me think of proverbs i believe 16 and 18 all right okay because if you if you exalt yourself the lord is going to humble you Proverbs 16 and 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. All right. So if you don't want to the Lord to take you down then you got to remain humble. All right. The Lord, um, you know, he, he hates a prideful spirit. It says pride is hateful both before man and God. All right. And Yahweh. So going back to Philippians chapter two, it says, uh, <clears throat> verse 10, that at the name of Yahweh Shai, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai Hamashiach is Lord to the glory of Yahweh the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. All right, and the Lord tells us that those who Say they love the Lord, but do not obey his words are liars and the truth is not in them. Let's go to first John chapter two and verse four. He that saith, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of Yahweh perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. All right. So we are to be obedient. OK. And use the example of Yahweh Shai on how to live our day to day life. All right. We should look at how he lived. OK. And how the patience that he had, the discipline that he had. All right. The, um, the bravery that he had. OK. To to, uh, you know, the strength. The spiritual and mental strength that he that he had that it took to go through what he went through all right to, to willingly put himself up to that and subject himself to that punishment all right we ought to we ought to to uh you know we ought to keep uh keep use that as an example of the faith that we ought to have all right it says um going back to philippians chapter 2 it says i'm gonna read that again verse 12 beloved my wherefore my beloved as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. 
For it is Yahweh which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. All right, so when you, when you are obedient to the law, statutes, and commandments, and you're doing this work, it's because the Heavenly Father is, is dealing with you. Okay, he's the one that's, that's putting that on your spirit to do these things. It says, do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of Yahweh, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. All right, so we are the lights of the world. Okay, and that world is really talking about the um, the nation of Israel, but also, you know, uh, the actual Gentiles. In the end, we are going to be the ones that teach them the law, as it tells you in uh, Isaiah chapter two and Micah chapter four. And the nations shall um, shall come up to the mountain of the Lord. All right, meaning the government, okay, of Yahweh Shai, the hundred forty four thousand, okay, King David, and uh, and and learn the ways of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, we're going to be the ones teaching them the law, statutes, and commandments of the Lord. Verse 16, it says, Holding, for, ho holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of the Hamashiach, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. All right, so, you know, we got to remain steadfast in the faith. Okay, what, what did it say back up in verse 12? It said, As you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. All right. Going back to 16, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Hamashiach. So holding forth, you know, uh, holding fast to this, this word of life, which is the Bible. Okay. That you may rejoice in the day of the Hamashiach. That, that you have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. The Lord is not unfaithful to forget your works. All right. Let's get that. I think that's uh it's in the book of Hebrews. Can't remember exactly where. But I know it's in the book of Hebrews. Let's get it right quick. Uh slack it, bear with me. To forget labor of love. Alright, it's in the book of Hebrews for sure. Here it is, six and ten. Okay. It says, For Yahweh is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. So the Lord is not unrighteous to forget all the good things, all the good works that you put forth. All right, they're not going to be in vain. Verse 17, Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. So the Lord, you, you know, you should be rejoicing that the Lord has called us to be in this ministry. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord, Yahweh Shai, to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who, who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own. Not the things which are Yahweh Shai Hamashiach's. But ye know the proof of him that as a son with the father, he has served me with he has served with me in the gospel. Him therefore I hope to send presently so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. But I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. Yet I suppose it is necessary to send to you Epaphroditus my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death. But Yahweh had mercy on him and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. All right, so that's, an, that's another uh, wonderful thing. The Lord can heal. He can heal uh, the sick. All right. Obviously, you know, you, you read the, you know, ho hopefully you've read the accounts of Yahweh Shai healing, you know, uh, giving the blind their sight back and healing the sick, casting out demons of people. All right. The Lord, the Lord can, um, you know, he can do all these things, man. And, and he, he, can, he, takes, he takes care of his saints. He takes care of those uh, workers who do his who do his work. All right. Verse 20, 28. I sent him, therefore, the more carefully that when you see him again, you may rejoice and that I may be the less sorrowful. Receive with him, therefore, in the Lord with all gladness and hold such in reputation.
because for the work of the anointed, he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life to supply your lack of service toward me. All right. So that's um, that shows how much faith he has. And a lot of brothers, you know, going through different things where the Lord said that he's not going to tempt us past what we can handle. All right. Let's get that. I had to Google this one. I'm not exactly sure where it's at. The Lord will not uh, give you more than you can handle. Let's see. Where is that scripture at? Uh, more than, than you can bear. Okay, here it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. All right. Yep. So, you know, we're going to go through different trials and tribulations, but it's all for the, uh, the trying of our faith. All right. So that was a good example of someone who, you know, as he was stating that even though he was going through ailments, he still was doing the work. First Corinthians 10 and 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But Yahweh is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. All right. And that, that could go into, uh, you know, it said temptation, but you know, a lot of times people, uh, they, you know, they, so this hard, bad times start coming and they, they, they get, they give up to work, but you got to remain faithful until death. All right. It says, um, let's see. Uh, verse 30, because for the work of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life to supply your lack of service toward me. All right. So that's that's a good example of someone who is who is faithful and steadfast in the faith. But uh, Lord willingness is edifying to the elect wherever you may be scattered across the four winds of heaven, the four corners of the earth. That being said, all praise, honor, glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekakwadash. Until next time, Shalom.